Father's love, everyone. Today we're going to read the John 5 commentary. Of course, as always, it's by F.B. Meyer. So sit back and enjoy the commentary. John 5, 1 through 9. Weakness made strength. An interval of some months lies between the previous chapter and this, in which many of the incidents of our Lord's Galilean life took place. John does not touch on them because they had been described in the Synoptic Gospels, and because he wished to concentrate all his force on the great conflict which our Lord waged in Jerusalem, the stronghold of Jewish prejudice. He also chose the incidents which led to our Lord's discourses and served as the text of his words. The pool of Bethesda had medicinal properties. It was an intermittent spring. There must have been something in this man who lay at its brink, which specially attracted Jesus. He saw that he had faith to be healed, and therefore made a direct challenge to the will of the sufferer. As soon as the appeal was made, he opened his heart to Christ's power. Through his expectant faith, new energy poured into his being. Are you a withered soul? Healing and wholeness are in Christ for you. Receive from him the power that waits to flow through your wasted muscles. Believe that it is passing through you and act accordingly. Spring to your feet, roll up your bed, and carry that which has long carried you. John 5, 10-18, Sabbath work that pleases the Father. In the foregoing incident, our Lord not only healed the sufferer after 38 years of deferred hope, but did so on the Sabbath, and bade him carry his bed home. This clashed with the Pharisaic prescriptions. But the man was of course right to infer that he who would work so great a miracle was greater than either the Pharisee or mere ritual. The religious leaders of that time, like those of all time, could not tolerate the setting up of an authority superior to their own by one who was outside their ranks, and they accused Jesus of Sabbath-breaking. His judges, however, were little prepared for his line of defense, which revealed the depths of our Lord's inner consciousness. First, he spoke of God as his own Father, making himself God's equal. Philip 2.6 who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Second, he said that God was working through his life and had energized him to perform that miracle of healing. It was not his own deed, but the Father's in him and through him. If then they condemned it, they were in direct collision with the infinite one from whom the Sabbath law had originally come. John 5, 19-29, The Father Working Through the Son The relationship of our Lord to the Father was such that he felt himself competent to fulfill all the functions of the Divine Being. Is it God's prerogative to raise the dead? It is also Jesus Christ. The Son quickeneth whom he will. Is it the Divine Right to be the Judge of Man? It is also the Redeemer's Right. Is it the peculiar attitude of God to be the fountain of life so that life inherent, underived, and perennial is ever arising in his nature, sustaining here an angel and there a hummingbird? This is also an attribute of our blessed Lord. So hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. The entire sum of the attributes of deity are resonant in the nature of the Son of Man. But though all divine attributes were his, and might have been called into operation, he forbore to use them, that he might learn the life of dependence and faith, the life which was to become ours towards himself. He did nothing apart from the Father. John 5.19 Then Jesus answered and said to them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son cannot do anything of himself, but what he seeth the Father doing, for what things soever he doeth, these the Son doeth in like manner. No vine ever 
clung more closely to its trellis, no child to its mother, than he to the father. Galatians 2.20 And I live, now not I, but Christ liveth in me. That I live now in the flesh, I live in the flesh of the Son of God, who loved and who loved me and delivered me. Hebrews 12.2 Looking on Jesus, the author and finisher of faith, who having joy set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and now setteth on the right hand of the throne of God. John 5, 30-38 Jesus works his sufficient witness. The one desire and purpose of our Lord was to do God's will. We cannot penetrate the mystery of his ineffable being, but clearly, so far as his human nature was concerned, he had a will which could be denied and subordinated to the Father's. John 5.30 I can of myself do anything. As I hear, so I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him that sent me. John 6.38 Because I came down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Luke 22.42 Saying, Father, if thou wilt, remove this chalice from me. Be yet not my will, but thine be done. It meant shame, a breaking heart, a soul exceeding sorrowful, the cry of the forsaken, but he never swerved. He clung to it as to a handrail down the steep, dark staircase that led to Calvary. Let us live according to God's will. It feeds the spirit. It clears the judgment. It gives rest and tranquility to the heart. It is the key of certain and assured knowledge. It introduces us into a great circle of others who in the past and present, in heaven and on earth, are living with the same purpose. Our Lord cites his allies John the Baptist, the Scriptures, and Moses. Choose this life policy. There's no other way. Remember that God's will is good will, and that his love is endless and changeless. John 5, 39-47 Will for Rejection of Truth Condemned our Lord was accused by the Jews of Sabbath-breaking. There were many grounds on which he might have claimed exoneration, but he forbore to use them. He dwelt on these things very lightly, lest he should direct men's attention to himself, his one aim being to bring glory to his Father. In utter self-oblivion, in distinct refusal to act on his own authority, that is, to come in his own name, with the one desire to reveal the inner source of his life. Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name. Let us learn not to be too careful of our own reputation, standing, or honor, but to live at first hand, taking our orders and the power to fulfill them directly from Christ. Too often we consult this man's opinion, that person's whim, and our course becomes torturous and uncertain. What new interest should we take in the P Pentateuch if we really believed? I hope that truly blesses each and every one of you who listened to it. A lot of stuff to chew on in that one. Remember, always seek first our Father's face. Realizing we can do nothing without the Holy Spirit. And always trying to follow in Jesus' footsteps and obey his commandments. Continue to pray for the children and the weaker among us. Continue to shine that light into this ever-darkening world. Never listen to any man. Always listen to the will of our Father. 
which can be seen in the life of his son. Thank you. Have a blessed day.